Welcome. Hi, thank you. There are right now a lot of tough budgetary choices for the government with the war ongoing, a lot of belt tightening. Your ministry, though, recently unveiled a 170 million shekel plan to increase Aliyah and absorption. You see it not as an expenditure, you see it as an investment in the future of Israel. Tell us about this plan. Exactly. You know, Israelis after October 7th are praying for a winning picture. And I can say to you that Aliyah will be, and even now is, the winning picture of Israel. Do you know how many Olim made Aliyah to Israel since October 7th? I know you're going to tell me. 19,000 Olim since October 7th. That's a miracle. So it's not easy, but we uh, tried and succeeded in uh, convincing the Treasury and, of course, the Minister of Aliyah and Integration of Philosopher had a lot of uh, work in it uh, to, to convince that making Aliyah to Israel now is uh, something that the State of Israel needs more, more than ever. With our partners, we are saying that Olim today building Israel is tomorrow, and we are very proud of it. So a lot of new benefits you're giving in terms of rental assistance, in terms of tuition, education, things like that. Where do you feel it's going to make the most difference? So first of all, we have a new project uh, with students, with academia. We have um, degrees, special degrees, that you start the first year with your own uh, language from home, with English uh, uh, speakers and uh, French speakers and Russian speakers. And the second year, you, you're studying with Israeli and after you have uh, your Hebrew be better. So this is the first thing, but we have a new, um, new uh, programs of Aliyah with housing. First of all, we've just approved a new act that uh, New Olim will be able to have a better um, uh, rate of mass uh, rechishas for your buying your first house in Israel. And it will be a lot be um, cheaper for New Olim. And Olim that will go to the south to the north and to Judea and Samaria will have 2,000 shekels every month for two years. It will help them build their life in Israel. Because we understand in the ministry that Aliyah is just the beginning. Today, more and more of our effort are for integration. Because we understand that if we'll uh, have a better integration, we'll bring more Olim to Israel. So, so we're working very hard about the integration part. That's a key because it's not just the Ministry of Immigration, Aliyah, it's the Ministry of Absorption as well. It's not just about bringing Olim, it's about keeping them there. That, I think that gets overlooked many times. Exactly. You know, I told my deputy of, of uh, encouraging Aliyah that till October 7th, most of my effort was on integration because I really believe that if our integration will be better, then we will succeed in bringing more Olim. Um, we, we, we have a big reform. Last, last year in this convention I talked about that we are planning and now we are after it, a big reform in studying Hebrew. We don't wait for the Olim to come to Israel. Every Ole that open a Aliyah file gets a link for studying Hebrew before he makes Aliyah. And now in Israel, we have more Ulpanim than ever for, um, for um, 20,000 Olim that can learn Hebrew each year. Now more than 50,000 Olim can learn Hebrew with, with a lot more Ulpanim that we opened this year. That, that's great. When I made Aliyah, we had a bunch of 30-year-olds sitting in a room in Merkaz Klita learning the Aleph Bet. You're already so far behind to be able to get that in advance where, and hit the ground running once you get to Israel. I mean, that, that makes a, a lot of difference. Exactly. And we now understand that we are trying to bring the Olim more and more information before they make Aliyah. We, has a, we have a special division in the ministry that's called um, uh, Livui Olim. We are 
meeting the Olim, our employees, the ministry's employees, after they are opening the Aliyah file, we started in France, South Africa, and England, and we are now br uh, building them a program of integration in Israel. They will not land and then discover, you know, it's very Israeli of us to uh, say to them, come to Israel and then you'll find out what you'll get. They are going to be in Ben Gurion Airport and they will know how their life will look like in the next two years. It's a different type of Ola and Ola that you're dealing with now, post October 7th, than beforehand. The bulk of the Olim pre-October 7th in, in the last few years have been from Ukraine, from Eastern Europe. Now we're seeing more and more from Western Europe, from South Africa, from North America. It's a different background. It's a, probably a much different expectation as well. How has your ministry been making that transition? So when Minister uh, Sofer uh, started his position, he, um, he told me that my job is to build new programs for Olim from Western Cartons because we were after the big wave of Aliyah from Russia and Ukraine and we saw the numbers uh, for, uh, of Olim from Western counties that, that decreased. Uh, so October 7th and the new situation that we see now, mostly in France, but even in England and in North America, and of course now in South Africa, that we are really concerned about the situation over there, we are ready with new programs from Aliyah uh, from Western countries. And I have to say to you, as, as we've started, we have like the new project of um, Aliyah Trofim, physicians, with the Ministry of Health and with Nefesh Benefesh. It's something that will build Israel for, for uh, decades, because the new Olims that come from Western countries and, and from all over the world are helping Israel with all of the challenges that we have. And we, we are looking at ourselves as, as the age of, uh, of uh, the state of Israel. We are doing it for years, but now we are working on bringing researchers. You know, I met last week at, at Boston at MIT with dozens of researchers that are willing to go uh, back to Israel now because after October 7th, they feel more uh, um, connected to Israel than ever. I wanted to talk to you about that because I have seen with my own eyes there's been delay for some families whose maybe tenure and business was up in here in America. They were preparing to go back. October 7th hits. Now they're maybe uh, uh, slamming on the brakes in terms of going back. How do you reach out to them and, and, and say, hey, with everything going on, there's still opportunity here. This is your home. This is where you should be. So first of all, by, by breaking the bureaucracy. We believe that most of the people want to make Aliyah, but the bureaucracy uh, gives them the, you know, the, the, the way to, to say, maybe I'll wait. So by guiding them and by being with them hand by hand, we believe that we'll succeed on doing uh, this now. And, and, and second, we see a wave of solidarity. You know, most of people ask me if the um, increase in Aliyah uh, opening files uh, is because anti-Semitism. And I have to say that we see more and more young families that are saying to us that uh, they want to make Aliyah now because, they, because of solidarity. We had a special poll that we ran last week uh, with more than 800 families that opened Aliyah files in the, in the last five years in North America. And 80% of them answered that after October 7th, they are willing and want to make Aliyah more than ever. Amazing. Abichai Kahana from the Ministry of Immigration and Absorption, thanks so much for the time and the insight. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much.